Hey guys, uh, this is uh, Investing with JYK, and I'm I am Yao Kai, and uh, let's discuss a another uh, uranium mining company. So this one's called GoVX. This company uh, is uh, way out there in uh, Africa. So where does this thing operate? You got, according to their presentation. Three mines, they have three mines. So let's look at here. You got one in Niger, Niger, one in Mali, one in Zambia. And uh, total measured and indicated. I'm not counting inferred because those you have to do, uh, you still have to delineate, delineate and all that stuff. So that's uh, going to be more cost. But in total, you're looking at something like 140 million pounds of uranium uh, of uh, uranium oxide so that's yeah okay so that's puts it if you compare that to let's say just chemicals um, uh, so that's like double energy fuels and then it's about half of uh, MacArthur River a single mine so these are not you know, I wouldn't call these world class, but they're not. They're also not that bad, and uh, the grades are not great either. So you got zero point one ish. Uh, so if you remember in energy fuels, these mines, these conventional mines, about zero point five, Macarthur River is ten, Cigar Lake is twenty. So, so that there we are. Now, yeah, so you can see this actually places it slightly higher than energy fuel, slightly like double. Um, okay. So the other th thing is that this company is, oh yeah. So um, about these three uh, mines, this, I'm gonna try to pronounce it, Madau, Madauela, Madauela. Has everything completed? You got a PEA. You got uh, the um, uh, that's a pre-economic uh, assessment, I think, and then pre-feasibility study. You got the mining permit, and then you're gonna do the. Uh, there's gonna be a definitive feasibility study, and then you start building. So he's saying that the production is gonna be 2020, and the Mutanga is missing the pre-feasibility, but has a permit and PEA, and that this Fadia thing is just completely out there so doesn't even matter that much uh, even if they were able to you know get it developed it's probably not going to benefit the company in this particular uranium cycle now one interesting thing is that in this is a difference uh, operating in in Africa versus all the Western countries you can see these two mines before their feasibility study, before their definitive feasibility study, they all had their mining permit. For Mutanga, you before the pre-feasibility, you already had the mining permit. So, so that kind of tells you how easy it is to obtain a mining permit in in Africa. So, when you look at mines in places like Australia, USA, or um, Canada. Having a permit is a big thing. Fully permitted mines are very valuable because these take like seven years. And in this case, I think they just give out these permits. It feels like they just give out these permits like candies. Right? So don't put too much emphasis on the fact that these two mines has permit because... Uh, if any other one, any other uh, mining companies want, they probably can get themselves a mining permit in in uh, um, somewhere in Africa as well. Now, okay, so what are these? So so that's their asset, right? So the, these are their asset, and they sell for really cheap. Um, I think it was something ridiculous. It was something like half a dollar per yeah here we go 
half a Canadian dollar per pound in in the ground. This is crazy cheap if you compare against anything else. Now, I think in in, in one way, obviously, it's cheap, but in in some other way, it's actually not because you are operating in some very non-friendly jurisdictions. And if you look at ease of doing business in Mali, yeah, they've been getting better. But, you know, 143 out of what? 100 and, I don't know, 100, maybe 190, yeah. 190 economy. It's not a nice place to be. You're probably going to face strike uh, you're gonna face corruption change of government maybe I don't know if the how, how stable the political situation uh, is there and lack of infrastructure right so all of these have to be taken into account and similarly if you look at Niger 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 yeah, they've been getting a lot better, but you're still looking. Yeah, look at that. This is 143 and 144 out of 190. These are very difficult places to do business. You probably will end up spending a lot more money than you think you will. Right, so then if you look at... Um, I was just searching for like uh, Niger uh, and, and Mali mining strikes so is one of the things that you have to worry about. The other thing is government confiscation. So, for example, in Indonesia, just essentially confiscated um, uh, Freeport McMoran's copper mine, the Grassberg uh, copper mine. Like they took, they just took like twenty five percent. I think. What can you do? They've got the guns. You can't. You can't fight a country, right? So, yeah, so, the, so there are, are definitely risks involved in, in this, but this is super cheap. Now, the other thing we have to watch is their balance sheet, obviously. This company, um, in fact, doesn't have much money, has no revenue. None of their mines are producing, obviously, so they have no revenue. They've got $4 million in the bank. And uh, whatever account receivable, I, I don't even know what they sold. I don't even know why they got their account receivable. Anyways, got four million dollars in their bank. Um, this asset doesn't matter. You can't sell them. They have a loan from uh, Toshiba. They have no long time, uh, a long term debt. So that's a good thing. But again, you, you see, they, they, they only have $4 million, right? So what about cash flow? They probably burn cash all the time. Um, so let's see. Oh, yeah, and the other thing, look at the share count. That's in a single year. Okay, so their cash flow, where is the cash flow? Yeah. So they spend about $3 million. That means they will burn off all their money, about all their money, in a single year. Right. So this company is going to keep issuing shares, diluting the shareholders, uh, because it has no other way. And it's a good thing they're doing it through uh, shares, actually, because they have no revenue. If they wanted to borrow money as a loan, nobody would lend to him. If even if the people lend to him, it would be a stupid idea because um, you get a chance of wiping out all the equity that was in in this company. Because if it can't make the interest payment or the, the principal payment, the bank takes over. You have nothing left. So even though it's diluting, it is a I would say a, a reasonable choice. Uh, the other thing they did recently is they bought this Redgate uh, Capital. So the Redgate Capital, it was actually two of the three mines. They, they controlled two of the three mines. So uh, if we go up, we can see that. Yep. 
whoops. Right. So this is their own mine, which is all permitted, all done. They're stressing they have road access and skilled miner, but this is actually true because Nigeria is a place where where uranium mining is uh, is a big thing. It, it accounts for eight percent of the world's uranium production. So Arriva recently was going to shut down the uh, Niger uh, uh, mine. So all these miners that's experienced in uranium mining now needs a new job. So so the, that they're not BSing here. And it's kind of funny, groundwater and grid power. And so you never think about these when you live in, in, in the West. Or, in fact, anywhere that's somewhat developed. But it, in, in places like Nigeria, you're like, okay, these are, these are things. And even in uh, Saskatchewan, that's a thing. Like, northern Saskatchewan, you, don't, you, you need to make your own power. You need to build your own infrastructure. So they got this Mutanga thing, and then they've got the other one. The other uh, Fadia thing, right? That, 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 that mine has tiny inferred, um, tiny amounts of inferred uranium. So it doesn't, you don't even need to pay attention. So what they got is basically about 20 million pounds, sorry, 15 million pounds of uh, uranium. Uh, and some inferred. This I'm gonna discount that because it's very low grade, and the, it's very low grade stuff, right? It's very low grade compared to their own thing, which is uh, even though it's also low grade, but this like already three times uh, higher in, in grade. And it, you can see it actually gets reflected in the operating cost as well, thirty one U S dollars per uranium, and then their their own thing. Their old own thing had the twenty four, so that's a you can see the, the the grade making a difference. In any case, they bought these guys these uh, this uh, Mutanga thing for I think it was for uh, five. Let's see, I think it was for something like five million dollars or something, four million dollars, I think. Yeah, here. Right, share issued. You got uh, three, four million dollars here, and, and then you got another three hundred uh, thousand. I mean, four point four. But these are warrants. Warrants basically will further dilute in the future if the price. These are like long dated options. Essentially, you give these long dated options to uh, whoever the, 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 the seller is, in this case Denison Mines, and uh, when the price of GoVX goes to I think 15 cents, the, the um, Denison Mines can then, uh, basically they, have a, they can buy GoVX shares at 15 cents for a certain uh, amount of years. Currently, it's at uh, 20, I think, so I think that's already there. Um, yeah. So they spent about $4 million, and then $4.4 million, they got 15, 15 million pounds. So is it a good deal? Meh. Because right, you're looking at... Uh, and these are Canadian dollars, by the way. So you're looking at... Um, Four point something, four point four million dollars, right? Four four zero zero divided by fifteen point two. Fifteen two zero. Another zero. So you got they got it about twenty twenty nine cents per per pound. They are currently selling themselves. As they pointed out, at uh, sorry, yeah, the problem. Is, yeah, they are looking at forty-three um, Canadian cents, right? So this is so let's just minus dot four three multiply Canadian is like seven nine, I think. So yeah, they they are slightly. Getting it at a slight discount to their own price, so I would say, yeah, maybe it's reasonable, but you know, again, it's it's 
you're getting a lower grade. Though. So it's not a horrible deal. Nowhere as crazy as you, you, you buying something at 5 something and selling at 1.25. But it's no, it's not a crazy good deal. But I wouldn't fault uh, them for it. It's their they're in a bad position, right? Uranium price is low, they can't make any money if they start producing, as you can see with the uranium prices below their cash cost, uh, not not to mention their um, all-in cost for the mine, right? So, yeah, their all-in cost is 36. Yeah, break-even, so, so this is funny, right? Break-even at NPV 8% is $48. So at $48, you got a zero NPV at eight <laughs> percent. Oh well. So yeah, this is a GoVX. Uh, what we, in summary, they got a, quite a lot of uranium, low grade, conventional. So you got to dig the ores, uh, dig up the ores. They got no cash. They keep diluting. They do okay deals. They are in horrible. Well, no, I don't know if it's horrible. They, they are in bad jurisdictions. Uh, they're selling really cheaply. So I own a little bit of that as well, but uh, it's, again, it's a long shot. If if the if uranium goes above forty eight, suddenly they become very profitable, but because they can bring in, they can suddenly start construction and then just start mining. Um, they got all everything lined up. They got the people. They got a. Um, they they have the uh, all the studies. And as they said, they can get it to 2020. So at 2020, they can actually get the, 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 the ores, the uranium to the market. And in terms of can they get the funding to do the mine building? I'm sure they can. If you look at their share owner, uh, shareholder structure, they got what? Oh, whoops. Here we go. Denison has some, uh, quite a bit of money. Not a lot. This Friedland, I don't remember which Friedland it is, but all these Friedlands has a lot of money. Toshiba almost went bankrupt, so we can't count count on those. Ivanhoe Industries is um, uh, has Ro Robert Friedland it has some uh, a hand in Ivanhoe Industries. Chemical obviously has a lot of money, so you got some big shareholders that will probably chip in to build a mine if it's profitable. Okay. All right. Um, oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, I think studying each country's economic history is gonna be quite useful for uh, these mining industries. So what I find is that I look at Mali, I look at Niger. I have no idea what happens there, except that they have some mining going on. If I knew. The what how the government behaves, what their political structures are, then I that would be a good edge uh, when going into this uh, this kind of situation. Maybe Mali and 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 uh, Niger aren't that bad for a uranium miner. Then the market actually has mispriced gold yet. You know, you can only prepare, and then there are so many things to be prepared. So, okay, so this is it for GoVX, and uh, we'll discuss some other miners in the future.